with Channels TV podcast and get all the trending stories, simply log on to ChannelsTV.com, click on podcast, select the program of your choice and listen. Our podcast is available on Apple, Google and Spotify. Tap the expertise you trust. Touch the stories that touch you anytime, anywhere. Nation's commercial capital. This is the News at 10. Live from Channels Television. Reporting tonight, I Wawodo. State have been rescued two weeks after they were taken away by bandits. The state governor, Ubasani, who confirmed the rescue of the children earlier today, commended the president and security agencies for their role in ensuring the release of the children. March 7th, a day never to be forgotten by the people of Kuriga community. Bandits attacked the Lea Primary School and Government Secondary School, both located in Chikun local government area of Kaduna State, abducting scores of school children in the process. The attack, considered one of the biggest mass abduction in recent times, also sparked national and international outrage. In the aftermath of the incident, a teacher from the school had told Governor Basani during his visit to Kuriga community that over 200 children were abducted and taken to an unknown destination. Determined to rescue the abducted school children, Governor Sonny, in collaboration with security agencies, swung into action, and two weeks after, their efforts paid off. The children are rescued in the early hours of Sunday in neighboring Zamfara State through the joint efforts of the military and local authorities. The military authorities, however, put the number of abducted students at 137, comprising 76 females and 61 males, all between the ages of 5 and 15 years. The excited parents are waiting to be reunited with their children. I'm here in the government house to receive my child, as the government called us to, to see our child. But we are here, even though we've not seen them, but we have been assured, we've been informed by the governor himself that these are children are with them. They are taking care of them by tomorrow. They want to do some, you know, they want to maybe give them some something. By tomorrow, after treating them, they'll hand over the children to, the, to their parents. Ariota is, is just nine years old. We've been feeling very bad. Very, very bad because we cannot expect a small child, seven years, nine years, ten years, you know, in this, in the hands of bandits. How, you know, no food, you know, no drinking water. So how do you, how do you, in fact, you have to feel very, you know, you just have to, how would you feel if it's your child? <laughs> Meanwhile, as part of efforts to beef up security in vulnerable communities, a contingent of 200 police special intervention forces have been deployed to create a community by the Inspector General Police. They were received by the governor at the government house ahead of their deployment. I'm happy that they are back home now. They are with us. And police have played a major role in bringing these children back home. I want to thank the IG. I want to thank all the security agencies. I want to specially thank President Bola Majinebu. To the parents, to the community, uh, we congratulate them as well. And uh, we appeal to them that uh, they should accept them. And uh, these children need to be treated very well because of what they passed through. 
and they need to go back to school as well. Although the mass kidnapping of students in the northwest geopolitical zone has reduced in recent months, the Kuriga abduction is a wake-up call for the government and security agencies to put more boots on the ground, especially in vulnerable communities where most of the attacks take place. <laughs> In the meantime, the governor of Kaduna State, Obasani, has confirmed that all the school children rescued in Samfara State Forest in the early hours of today are now in Kaduna State. Speaking on our political platform, Sunday Politics Today, Governor Sani explains that contrary to earlier reports of abducted 287 school children, the number of children involved in the March 7, 2024 abduction from Kuriga in the Chicken local government area of the state is 137. He regrettably adds that a teacher who was kidnapped along with the pupils could not make it out alive as he developed some complications while in captivity. As we are speaking, the children are here in Kaduna, and of course uh, they are here, uh, and as we are speaking, in the next uh, few minutes I will even be with them, because I saw them earlier. Uh, they are in a very high spirit. Uh, of course, uh, the military will, will hand them over to me officially by tomorrow, but uh, still, uh, they are here in Kaduna. I have been working closely with the military uh, to ensure that uh, we look after them. Uh, and of course, uh, we are also trying as much as possible well to give them some social uh, counseling and look after them before we eventually hand them over to the families. There was nobody that ever confirmed that the children were 287. But those numbers were just figment of some people's imaginations. They just went to the media and reported that uh, the figures were that. And today, I met the, the, the families with the children. They confirmed to me uh, that uh, the numbers given by the uh, military uh, are the correct numbers. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu has applauded the release of the abducted Koriga school children in Kaduna State and the peoples of the Sagaya School in Sokoto State. According to a statement by the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity to the President, Ajurin Gelali, the development emphasizes the importance of collaboration between the federal and state governments for expected outcomes, especially on matters of security. The president commended the National Security Advisor, the security agencies, and the Kaduna State Government for the dispatch and diligence with which they handled the situation. He stresses that in situations of mass abductions, meticulous attention and tireless dedication are crucial for achieving the best possible outcome. The president is also assuring Nigerians that his administration is deploying detailed strategies to ensure that schools remain safe sanctuaries of learning and not for wanton abductions. Two days after the death of students in the stampede in Nasarawa State, a similar tragedy struck in Bochi State today, where six persons lost their lives in a stampede during an almsgiving exercise for the poor in Bochi State. One other person was injured in that incident. is currently receiving medical treatment at the Abubakar Tafawa Balewa University Teaching Hospital in Bochi. The stampede occurred at the headquarters of the Shafa Holdings Company PLC along Joss Road earlier today during the distribution of cash to the resident. The police public relations officer, Ahmed Wakili, confirmed the incident to Channel's television and assured that the situation has been brought under control. Meanwhile, in Nasarawa State, government officials have been visiting families of victims of Friday stampede, which claimed the lives of two students. The State Commissioner for Humanitarian Affairs, Margaret Alayo, who led the delegation, visited Marabar Edege village in Nasarawa local government area and Kubang village in the Panda local government area of Karu to console with the families. The district head of Edege, Aminu Enupe, expressed appreciation for the concern extended by the government as he calls for better management of such processes in the future. According to the commissioner, 19 of the injured students have been discharged, while four others are stable and responding to treatment with the medical bills catered for by the state government. 
Let's head to Imo State now, where the police command is appealing to indigents of the state to cooperate and support security operatives with useful and reliable information that will help in arresting criminal elements fueling insecurity in the state. The Commissioner of Police, Danjuma Aboki, made this appeal during a visit to Agua community in Uguta, local government area of Imo State, to inspect the ongoing reconstruction of the divisional police headquarters that was completely razed by bandits in August 2022, which led to the killing of four police personnel and one other person. Our correspondent, Ayi Tokwekuti, has this report. The Commissioner of Police in Imo State, Danjuma Boki, arrives at Divisional Police Headquarters in Agua Community, Uguta local government area of Imo State. He is received by some indigents of the area and traditional rulers from the autonomous communities making up the Agua clan. In August 2022, the police station was attacked by daredevil bandits who killed four policemen and a civilian. The bandits also burnt down the police station, raised all the vehicles parked within the premises, and freed some detainees. Since then, there has been no functioning police division in the area. Worried about the level of insecurity in the area and lack of policemen, the community began the reconstruction and rehabilitation of the police station, which the traditional rulers say was the envy of all police divisions in the state at the time. When this place was functional, you can see that the entire community were able to have a sigh of relief. And for now, there's no certainty of everything. We hope that Whenever they are going to send personnel, it will no longer be about four or five people. Because Agua is too large to be controlled by a few elements like what was there before. So we are expecting over 40 men so that all this place will be adequately policed. From there we can know what to do. The Commissioner of Police, Danjuma Buki, is here to inspect the level of the people that once the reconstruction is completed, the command will redeploy adequate policemen to secure the community. We came to assess the rate of work, again to assess the security situation, to enable us to redeploy personnel to man these premises. Because all the indigents of the community, they have deserted. They have approached the authority. They want the police person to return back to their own town. I'm calling on the citizens of this community. They should expose the bad ones. We need information from them. And all the unknown gunmen will be arrested and brought to book. Thank you. Traditional rulers in the area are happy with the receipt, but are still appealing to security operatives to protect them from bandits who have taken over their lands. Why do you see people here is because of fear. They are afraid. Few people you have seen here now is because they have seen the police. Otherwise, here is a deserted area. So we continue to beg police to con give us a continuous visit. Parading this area. And even we needed a, a, a motor car to be placed here to put fear into this place. Agua community is one of the oil producing communities in Imo State, but in the last three years, insecurity has dealt a heavy blow on the community, displacing many and crippling economic activities in the area and neighboring communities. Eita Kakute, Channel Television News. In part two, after the break, President Bola Tsunubu opts for low-key 72nd birthday celebration amid the country's security challenges. Please join us again. Where is Glory? Excuse me, ma'am. Hello? Oh, where is Glory now? Are they here? Don't go village, tell all our customer. Abby. Everybody pay attention. See, now Globe related 10x. Now he might take tension, my customers. Now they dash me 10 times the credits when I load. Or even summon me double data join. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so with one five minutes, give on the boss, so you they enjoy up to 15,000 naira credit and data. And I say I never finish you. See, when I say the enjoy, if you not join Globe related 10x, when I go get one. Welcome credit. Really? 
Good love, you dog. Oh, now see there yet. Hello. Please, I'm looking for glow. Please, says now glow be the fine. Now glow be the go. Okay, so enjoy ten times the value of your recharge on Glow Barricade 10X. You also get one thousand naira for calls and data and double data bonus on your subscription. you can now print all your essential items for events without even having to leave your home? It's the Cast Prints Combo Deal for all events. Yes! Weddings, conferences, birthdays, burials, etc. Starting from 495,000 Naira only. You get 50 invites, 50 A2 size posters, 50 16 page brochures, one large backdrop banner, one roll up banner, 50 jotters with pens, and 50 souvenir carrier bags. Whatever event you're planning, we can adjust to your budget and and quantities. Just send your pictures and other information through WhatsApp and we shall send a design for your approval. Approve your design and we will produce with super high quality digital print technology. We can even arrange delivery to your location. Call us now on 0913-156-5016 or 0812-794-9323 or visit our social media pages. Cast Prints, digital printing at super speed. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, reaching you live from Lagos, Nigeria. A reminder of our main stories. It's a day of joy as rescued Kariga school children return to Kaduna State after spending 17 days in captivity. No fewer than six persons die in a stampede during an almsgiving exercise in Bochi State. Christians celebrate Palm Sunday, marking the last week of the Christian solemn season of Lent that precedes the arrival of Easter. And 19 candidates vie to succeed President Macky Sall in a keenly contested presidential election in Senegal. They say is singular, but the recent security events in Delta State seems to have led to several truths. Tonight, our focus is on the Pandora box, how to secure the Niger Delta region, increase oil production, and of course, protect members of the armed forces of Nigeria. Babajide Ogunso, founder of Leadership by Data and Channels Television's data analyst, is here to share insights on this topic. Hello, Babajide. Thank you for joining us again on the News at 10. Good evening, Anne. Good evening. Are there new facts about the security situation in Okwama community in Delta State? It depends on how you want to look at it. But one thing I've seen from my research is if we look back at what exactly happened on March 14th, 1978. Now, March 14th, that week of March 14th, 1978 was when the government, the Nigerian government, was putting finishing touches on the new national anthem. Um, may the labor of our heroes past not be in vain. March 14, 1978. And now, it's now 
half a dozen years past four decades. Again, the week of March 14th, we saw what happened. Military personnel were brutally murdered. Same week, different stories. Good news in 1978, March 14th. Bad news, March 14th, 2024. So I think the, perhaps the most ideal place to start is to remember our fallen heroes. So I'd like us to take a look at exactly what were their names, what were their faces, because they represent our heroes and their labors should, should, should not be in vain. So let's take a look at, at that before we go into the details of the Niger Delta region and exactly what the future looks like. And we know their labors will never be in vain. So let's continue the conversation about the facts coming out from Okwama community, as we said earlier. So Okwama in Delta Ann. The focus is with tonight we need to look at two things exactly why Delta and how important Delta is to Nigeria and to clearly understand that when we talk about oil in Nigeria, we're really referring to Delta State. Let's take a look at how much money the Delta State Government. The Delta State Government has received from the federal allocation since this new government came in, relative to every other state. And that's what is in front of us. These are the top 10 states that have received the most money from the Federation account since 2023, May 2023, when this government came in. By far, Delta State is number one. 326 billion naira. No other state has even hit the 300 billion mark. But what you see clearly is the other states in the top five, excluding Lagos, Rivers, Aquaibom, Bielsa, these are the states receiving most of the money from the Federation account because these are the states that are producing most of Nigeria's crude oil. And what we've seen in history, even when we have the issues of amnesty for militants. What we've seen is that when we talk about oil in the Niger Delta, it is related to a lot of bunkering, it is related to a lot of crime, and it is related not to only small and light weapons, it's related to big arms and a lot of heavy weapons. And so we clearly understand that Delta State, yes, the government is making, is receiving a lot of money from the Federation account, but we also know that implication also means that there are lots of bunkering activities, lots of illicit operations going on because of the volume of crude oil exploration activities going on in the, not only in the Niger Delta, in Delta State specifically. One point. Now the second point, and is to look at, has this money changed in Delta State? So has the trend been the same? Are we seeing recent volumes in Naira? And that's the answer. Look at what has happened January to February, first two months of 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. We see the numbers are similar. 36 billion Naira as net allocation to Delta State in 2019 in the first two months. In those other years, January to February 2020, 34 billion. The next year, January to February 2021, 26, 36. We've seen similar figures between 2019 to 2022. Last year, January to February, the Delta State government received 75 billion naira. And this year, based on the information from the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation and the National Bureau of Statistics, they say the first two months of this year, 68 billion naira. Clearly, significantly different from history. So what we clearly have seen is that there's a lot of money going around in Delta. The Delta State government is making a lot of money. And yes, it's giving 
militancy, militant gangs' incentive to also try and make some of theirs. So we want to ask how important is the state, that's Delta State, to Nigeria's crude oil production? And also, what is the security situation when we talk about overall security situation in the South-South region? First answer, when we talk about Nigeria's crude oil, the first state that comes to your mind is Delta State. That answers it. So clearly we need to understand that Delta State is the heart of Nigeria's economic production when it comes to crude oil. Now to the second question, Delta State isn't clearly the only state in, in the South South. You know, we have rivers, Aquaibon, Cross River, Edo, Bielsa. So overall, we have some surveys that have been tracking security situation in, in Niger Delta, and we need to take a look at has, what have the trends been. The summary shows that recently, prior to now, the trends have been positive. Um, but however, these were, were as at the end of last year. Looking at what the situation was as at February 2022, when citizens were asked, is security improving in your region? February 2022, 48% of citizens said security was improving. That improved, that in, in, improved to 52% in February 2023. We noticed the decline as at 2023, June, when the government came in. But since 2023, what we've seen is our citizens saying security had been improving prior to the events of March 14. So as of October 2023, 51% of respondents, citizens said security was improving. As at the end of last year, December, 55% of citizens in Nigeria's South-South region said security was improving. So clearly, since the government came in, security in the South-South region, excluding what has happened in this first quarter, the news was positive from citizens. But actually, I mean, you talked about oil theft in these regions, but is there any way the security agencies can peacefully minimize oil theft? That's the major problem. Um, oil theft is an economy in the Delta region, especially in Delta State. You heard me right. Oil theft is an economy just as Nigeria is an economy. So you have those that have made oil theft their economy, and for them, they are attempting to protect the economy. So the summary is, as the military forces continue to try to increase crude oil production, for those in that other economy, that black economy, they feel their economy is being challenged, and those in that economy are fighting the military, they're fighting the security agencies in all possible ways. So in the future, we might most likely hear of more casualties if the military intends to significantly go ahead with the president's order. But you know, one of the things that also is touching is the military have said that they will use both hard and soft ways. And if we take a look at the recent statements, even from the head of the Nigeria's military, that's um, General Christopher Musa, he's clearly said that the only medicine that can cure hatred is love. And clearly what we should expect in the future is, even though the military is talking soft on this sort of issue, saying that they will apply non-connected means and will engage the communities, the communities and those involved in this parallel economy in Nigeria's Niger Delta should also understand that there has to be a shift in how we run this country. So in all, the future is bright. In all, we should expect Nigeria's crude oil production to increase, and we should understand that communities need to down their tools and engage in positive peace talks. All right, positivity and love, those are the two key words. Thank you very much. Abajide Ogunso, founder of Leadership by Data and Channel Positivity and, and love, and you have your head on. <laughs> to show love. All right, thanks a lot for your time. To other stories, President Bola Tinubu has announced that he will be opting for a low-key 72nd birthday celebration amid the economic and security challenges facing the country. The president, in a statement by his special advisor, Media and Information, Bayo Nonuga, cites the recent killings of some army and police personnel in Delta State, as well as several security breaches as events that have contributed to the gloomy mood of the nation. He has, however, asked his associates not to organize any events in Instead, use the opportunity to reflect and rededicate themselves to the task of building a more stable and more secure country. The statement reads in part, Although the president appreciates the gallantry of our armed forces and freeing our children kidnapped in Guriga, Kaduna State, and in Sokoto State, he will use the opportunity of his birthday to reflect and rededicate himself to the task of building a more stable, more secure, virile, and prosperous and united Nigeria. President Tinubu enjoins friends and associates who may wish to place goodwill advertorials to kindly donate the money to charity organizations or their choice in his name.
Nigerian Christians today joined their counterparts in other parts of the world to commemorate Palm Sunday, which symbolizes Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Palm Sunday marks the first day of the Holy Week and the beginning of the last week of the solemn season of Lent. It is celebrated by the blessing and distribution of palm branches, representing the palm branches that the crowd scattered before Christ as he rode into Jerusalem. Well, right here in Lagos, the parish priest of Our Lady of Perpetual Help Catholic Church in Isheri, Reverend Father Beniza Kindero, speaks on the significance of the day. The passions of our Lord Jesus Christ were recorded to assist you and I to get to heaven. The passions were recorded to let us know what the Redeemer, the Savior, went through for your sake and for my sake. Hence, all of us, you and I, all of us in our own way. Therefore, our life should be in humility to the service of God. You and I, God has entrusted things to your hand and to my hand. God has asked you to do things for Him. God has sent you to minister on his behalf to people, as he has sent me also to minister to people on his behalf. The still ahead on the news at 10. After weeks of political unrest, Senegalese are voting for a new president. Our correspondent Kayla Megua is in the West African country and has all the key details of that election right after this break. Please stay with us. Podcast and get all the trending stories. Simply log on to channelstv.com, click on podcast, select the program of your choice, and listen. Our podcast is available on Apple, Google, and Spotify. Tap the expertise you trust. Touch the stories that touch you anytime, anywhere. There are places you would like to go. There are faces you would like to see. My palm is bruised. It's a tiny scar, but it's very painful. Too many exciting things happening all at once. Sometimes I've always loved playing the villain. But you can't be everywhere. Guess what? Yes, we can. Your favorite lifestyle content lives here. Let us be your eyes and ears here on Entertainment News on Channels Television. The new auditorium for the Evangelical Church winning all Equa in Kiloshin, Gombe State has been dedicated. The ultra-modern auditorium, which was donated by Mr. Jerry Damara, in what he describes as his desire to lift his community to greater heights. The colorful event brought the entirety of Kulishin and Shungum community to a standstill owing to the massive turnout of guests from far and near. It's the dedication of the Equa Gospel Church donated to the Kulishin community in Shungum local government area of Gombe State by Mr. Jerry Damara. The event brings dignitaries together from within and outside the state, notable amongst them the former head of state, General Yakubo Gawan, former Minister of Information, Professor Jerry Gana, former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubo Dogara, as well as the Governor of Plateau State, Mr. Caleb Othwang, amongst others. The floodgates of speeches opens with Mr. Jerry Damara giving an insight into what motivated him to build the church. We came for a luncheon. They say they want to build a church of 25 million. And what we could gather that day, apart from what I brought, was 700,000. So I divided 25 million, divided by seven. Now you can see, in the next 30 years, we will be coming to collision for launching, and we have not done anything. It was in that place that I was struck by the Holy Spirit. God built his church. He only used me 
For the guest speaker, Reverend Silas Yako, there's need for Christians to cultivate the spirit of thanksgiving in addition to setting good examples in whatever they do. I believe that our brother, deep in his heart, did this because he was grateful to God for what God did in his life. So real thanksgiving is forgetting not. Remembering the goodness of God. It is said that if you are thoughtful, you will be thankful. There's time for musical interlude as Pan and Percy Paul serenades the gathering. Former head of state General Yakubu Gawan congratulates the Ekwa family in Kulishin and prays that the church serves as a rallying point for the state and the nation. Ekwa Gospel Church, Kaltungo, will be a tremendous blessing uh, to the entire Equa family in Gombe State and indeed to the whole body of Christ in Nigeria. After his speech, Equa President Reverend Stephen Panya leads other guests to dedicate the place of worship and cut the ribbon. And commission it for use from now onward until Christ comes. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. As guests depart after the inauguration of the edifice, it's obvious that the residents of Kalishin community will not forget this day in a hurry. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT Nyesamwike, says churches shall not neglect politicians after serving their, out their terms in office. Mr. Wike, who was speaking at a Thanksgiving service at St. Mark's Anglican Church in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital, today, says the church should lead by example and not create the impression that politicians are only relevant for, the long, for as long as they remain in office. I want to commend the preacher who has talked about ingratitude and thanksgiving. But who had also said politicians should remain steadfast, politicians should fulfill promises when they make promises. I thank you for that. But I want to bring it back to the church. The church should also remain steadfast. The church should not abandon people when they are no longer in office. I'm not talking because of this church, which is an opportunity since I'm in this church. When most of us were in office, and there's no church, no church in this state will say we have never contributed, not one, particularly the Anglican communion. But the lovely we left office, it was a different story. That is why we are saying there is not only politicians. We as agents of God, we as servants of God, must be firm. So the politicians will see that what you preach and you practice, we have no choice but to follow you. I've had a lot. In fact, I have refused to go to church and talk. I just keep quiet and allow whatever that will be, let it uh, be. But I felt that it's an opportunity to also say it. It's not only politicians, the church also. When we have come to your aid, always be there for us. Pray for us. Don't change because another person has uh, come. You have prayed and you have said ingratitude is never acceptable before God. And when you have known that people are ungrateful, the beware of your association with such uh, people. 
One million vulnerable Nigerians are on the verge of receiving 10 kilograms of rice each from the Aliko Dangote Foundation. And this follows the flag off of the National Food Intervention Program by the president of the foundation, Mr. Aliko Dangote, in the ancient city of Kano. Mr. Dangote says the program will go round all the 774 local government areas in Nigeria to cushion the burden being faced by vulnerable citizens at the moment. Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, is in Kano to personally flag off the distribution of 10 kilograms of rice aimed at bringing soccer to 1 million vulnerable Nigerians across the 774 local government areas at a cost of over 15 billion naira. Today we embark on a journey of compassion, solidarity, and shared responsibility. We are gathered here today to flag off the distribution of over 1 million 10 kilogram bags of rice, targeting 1 million of our most vulnerable across the 774 local government areas in Nigeria at the cost of over 15 billion naira. We will begin this humble endeavor in Kano State and Lagos State from today, recognizing the urgency of providing immediate relief to those in dire need. Our goal is to extend our reach across all the 36 and the federal capital territory, ensuring that as many of our fellow Nigerians as possible benefit. Kano will get the largest share due to its population and level of poverty. So for the past 30 years, we've been operating a daily feeding program for 10,000 people in Kano. In addition to that, for the past four years, ever since COVID happened, we've also been uh, donating 20,000 loaves of bread a day. So it's been four years now that we've been doing this program here in Kano. In addition to that, we've also been working on immunization. And most of you have heard about our partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to eradicate polio, to improve access to primary health care. And we've been doing that. We've been running a nutrition program called Aliko Dongota Foundation Integrated Nutrition Program. We were very active during COVID. Um, we donated a, a COVID lab here in Lagos, in Kano, which is still here. And we've also done micro grants for 88,000 women here in Kano. Governor Abba Yusuf of Kano State commends Ali Kodongote and called on other wealthy Nigerians to emulate him by providing palliatives to cushion the harsh economic situation in the country. On behalf of the good people of Kano State, this is because the gesture he is offering today will undoubtedly alleviate the burden of many families facing economic hardship in our state. I urge also all other wealthy individuals and businesses in our community to take heed of this noble example set by the Angote Group President and extend similar gestures of support to those in need in our dear state. The distribution of 10 kilograms of rice to vulnerable persons in Kano is in addition to other ongoing feeding programs in the state sponsored by the Aliko Dangote Foundation to support the economic well-being of vulnerable Nigerians. Sadiq Ilyasu, Channel Television News. And in the world of sports, as the 2024 Olympic Games draws near, Nigerian wrestlers have now joined Odwayo Adekoroye to qualify for the Games in Paris. Tokyo 2020 Olympic silver medalist Blessing Oborododu booked her own place after a 2 0 painful victory over Takong in Pelo in the 868. 
kilogram. But for Anna Rubin and Esther Kolawale, the joint Nigerian list of athletes going in Paris for the Olympics after she overcame Angelina Rodriguez of Cape Verde won 10 nil superiority to add to the African Games and the African Championship triumph. African Games champion Christiana Ogunsoya also overpowered Egyptian Barakat Mohamed 10 nil superiority to secure Paris Games qualification. And outside Nigeria, Carlos Sainz led Charles Clegg Cleric as Ferrari sealed a 1-2 of the Australian Grand Prix following the early retirement of world champion leader Max Verstappen. We have more on how the race played out and other sports stories. And Formula One is underway in Melbourne. Good reaction time at the front of the field for Carlos Sainz. But he's... Ferrari's Carlos Sainz surges to victory at the Australian Grand Prix earlier today to snap Red Bull's winning start to the season after three-time world champion Max Verstappen sensationally failed to finish. Do you believe what we're seeing? The man who has finished every Grand Prix since he retired from this one in 2022 has smoked from the rear of the car. Max Verstappen has an issue. The Spaniard who had appendicitis surgery two weeks ago took the checkered flag 2.3 seconds ahead of teammate Charles Leclerc with Mark Lawrence Lando Norris a bold third. Yeah, I can just tell you I'm extremely happy and not only because of these last two weeks but because of how difficult this year has been so far, you know, as I said on the radio, a bit of a roller coaster. You start the year with the uh, bad news of the non-renewal and a bit thinking, okay, what's next uh, in my life uh, and then you prepare yourself, you go training, you do your winter testing, you arrive to the first race and boom, a good podium that sets the season. A MotoGP, Jorgen Martins hit the front in the first lap and never relinquished his lead to win the Portuguese MotoGP at the second race of the season. Enia Bastianini was second and teenage rookie Pedro Acosta third. <laughs> In the ATP 1000 event in Miami, top seed Carlos Alcaraz was simply too much for his compatriot Roberto Cavalier Baina as he powered to a 6-1 win in 85 minutes. Well, it's tough, isn't it, when there's a point of that quality from... Alcaraz, who is looking to complete the sunshine double after his victory in India Wells last week, will next face French veteran Gael Morfields on Monday. He's up and running. Carlos Alcaraz. He gets the better of his fellow Spaniards. Birthday boy, Roberto Carvajal's bayonet. Symbolic moment. Flag has left Ghana, and now it's in the hands of the Arab Republic of Egypt. And Egypt has promised to host the best African Games as Ghana officially passed the flag to the North African as a host for the 14th edition in the city of Cairo in 2027. Egypt finished as winners with a record 101 gold, 46 silver and 42 bronze medals. Chinese investment in the Nigerian economy is visible in various infrastructure projects across the country. Chinese companies have now been partnering to modernize changes in Nigeria for decades. The strengthening that relationship is what the Lagos Forum 2024 hopes to achieve. A delegation led by the Chinese Consul General, Ya Kuang, is into the event in Lagos reiterated areas of investment, including rail transportation, deep sea port, and even road construction. Construction, but scholars of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs in Lagos, which is a venue for that event, say that it is time for Nigeria to redefine its policy with China. Our foreign affairs correspondent Amarachi Ubani reports.
The Forum on China is the first of its kind in Nigeria and is one China hopes will continue as relations with Nigeria progresses. It is attended by members of the diplomatic corps, the Chinese delegation, led by the Chinese Consul General, international relations scholars and the media. Private Chinese companies supervising the execution of different infrastructure projects in the country get situation reports on projects past and present. The Consul General Yan Yujin says both countries are one step closer to a better world. The Nigeria are strategic partners and the engagement between the two countries is a vivid example of the promotion of eco and the orderly multipolarity of the world. Director General of the Nigeria Institute of International Affairs, Professor Hosa Osagi, while commending areas of cooperation, said it's time Chinese services are domesticated in Nigeria. Because one of the cardinal points about Chinese emergence as a big power was transfer of technology as a platform you know, for all that China had in terms of its transformation. And so China must transfer technology to Nigeria. China must domesticate technology in Nigeria. And China must help, you know, in that regard. His words are reiterated by the acting director of research and studies at the NIIA, Dr. Ifem Ubi, who says re-strategizing foreign policy with China will build stronger cooperation and fast-track Nigeria's economic development. Theories like the constructivist theories. You know, you construct what you want to see and the propaganda you see that is coming is because the West or other countries or whoever feels who the people like us Sinophobes, people like us Sinoskeptics will construct a vision of the kind of China you want to see, a vision of the kind of Africa they want to see a vision of the kind of relationship between China, Africa, and all that. A book launch and some more discussions on varying aspects of relations, and the program comes to an end, with the hope that leaders will work towards real change for economic development. Amarachi Ubani, Channel Television News. People in Senegal have been voting today to elect a new president after months of uncertainty and unrest has set the nation's reputation and a stable democracy. Lines formed outside polling stations in the early hours of the morning while roads were largely deserted in the capital, Dakar. The nation's elite police force deployed across the city in armored vehicles and checked voters' card. Our correspondent Kayla Megua reports from Dakar. <laughs> No restriction of foot or vehicle movement in Dakar, Senegal, as the country's over 7.3 million registered voters line up to vote for a new president. <laughs> Senegal provides for diaspora voting. The total number of registered voters in the country are 7,381,894, and this number includes 336,040 who will be voting from abroad. There are 6,341 polling centers in the country and 367 abroad. 15,633 polling units in the country and 807 polling units abroad. Frontline candidates in these highly contested elections in Senegal are Bashiru Diomaye Faye, ex pastef party, and considered the main opposition. Amadou Ba, ruling Beno Bok Yaka coalition. Idrissa Sek, who's the former prime minister and came second during the 2019 polls. And Khalifa Ababakar Sal, former mayor of Dakar. There's only one female candidate in the race, and her name is Anta Babaka Ngom. The ECOWAS election monitoring team in Senegal is made up of 1,400 members, led by Professor Ibrahim Gambari, Nigeria's former Minister of External Affairs and former Chief of Staff to former President Mohamed Buhari. Well, so far, very peaceful and orderly. Uh, about 540 uh, each of the polling area, and all the materials are there. They, each of them have uh, the president, like the chairman of the uh, of the process. Um, the lists are 
uh, are there. The, each party representative also checks the list uh, the, that they have with the official list, and they correspond, and so far, so good. Pooling is peaceful across pooling units visited in Pekine, Adjawarath and Jene, and Berth Mubert. <laughs> After a quick review at the ECOWAS Situation Room, the team visits other Situation Rooms across the country, receiving assurances of a well-coordinated exercise with minor irregularities. A quick visit is made to one of the candidates in the polls, Mr. Khalifa Sal. And after a meeting, the team wraps up its roving and waits for Senegal's Constitutional Committee to announce the final results. The official results as they are read out to us uh, in hopefully the next few hours. From Dakar, Senegal, Kayla Megwa, Channels Television News. It's been a day of mourning in Russia for the 137 people killed in an attack at a concert venue near Moscow. While the Islamic State group has claimed responsibility for this horrible attack, Russian authorities are saying they have the four men suspected to have carried out the attack in their custody. The suspects have been taken to court in Russia. Женщина. Indeed, the Russian president says all four gunmen who carried out the attack on Crocker City Hall have been arrested. During his televised address on Saturday, he condemned the massacre, the deadliest Russia has seen in nearly 20 years. The president described it as a barbaric terrorist act and repeated earlier suggestions by Russian security services that the attackers had tried to escape to Ukraine. The Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has debunked the claims of Ukraine's involvement in the attack and described the Russian President and others in Moscow as scum for linking the attack to Kyiv. He suggested that the Russian leader was more concerned about pinning the attack on Kyiv than reassuring his own citizens. All morning on Sunday, Moscow residents lined up to lay flowers outside Crocker City Hall, where up to 6,200 people had gathered on Friday night for a rock concert by veteran band Picnic when the shooting started. Crocker City Hall is one of the most prominent music venues in Russia. Across the country, the Russian tricolor is flying at half-mast. Entertainment and sports events have been cancelled and TV anchors are wearing black. People have also been leaving messages, some addressing the attackers. The majority of mourners shocked and heartbroken. Across the world, tributes have also been pouring in for victims of the attack at Russian embassies. In a video published on Russian media outlets on Saturday, two suspects in the attack who were detained by Russian law enforcement were seen being interrogated. And the main news again. Rescued Koriga school children have returned to Kaduna State after spending over two weeks in captivity. We also told you that six persons died in a stampede during an almsgiving exercise in Bochi State. Also today, Christians celebrate Palm Sunday, marking the last week of the Christian solemn season of Lent that precedes the arrival of Easter. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. Have a wonderful week ahead. Good night.